it's Matt Williams here, uh, General Manager of GI Energy. I just wanted to give you a quick run through the system that I've got installed at my home here in Brisbane. When I moved into this place in October 2017, the previous owner had a small 1.5 kilowatt system that they'd installed through the 44 cent tariff back in 2011. Now, when we moved in, it was just the two of us. There's a swimming pool here, there's electric hot water, a little bit of air conditioning and a few other appliances that are going to consume quite a bit of power. So when we moved in, we put in a six and a half kilowatt system that's running through a five kilowatt inverter. You can probably just make out in the back of the video a couple of the panels that are on the eastern roof here. And there's a little bit of shade in the winter time till about nine o'clock, 8.30, 9 o'clock. So that's from the palm trees that are on this side, which I'll touch on in a bit more detail later on. The panels that I've got are Qcell 285 watt Q plus panels, which back in that time was their model that was made in Malaysia. Since then, they've designed a flagship model, which is the Qpeak Duo, which either comes as the G5 plus or G6 model, that now provide a full 25 year product warranty, along with the standard performance guarantee offered on all panels in Australia at 25 years. So the way that the panels are installed, there's 10 panels east on this side and there's 13 panels on the west so I've got 23 285 watt panels that are all running through that inverter. Now in the last year we've had a young daughter so our power needs have changed a little bit. We've gone from using an average of about 17 kilowatt hours a day up to now around 21 22 kilowatt hours a day in winter. A lot of that power will be through hot water um, obviously with, with having a bath each evening for my daughter and then myself and my partner with showers, washing up and, and other bits and pieces. So we've got the hot water heated through the days. We've got an electric tank, which is run through a timer and contactor. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like in my switchboard afterwards. We've also got a pool. The pool runs for roughly about five hours a day in winter and up to seven hours a day in summer. So at the moment we're timing that from about nine o'clock to about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon just to maximise as much as we can from the sun during the day when the system's providing power. A lot of people will ask us about an east-west home, as a lot of houses are built this way versus the standard north facing system. So we'll do some averages to compare how my system looks compared to something north facing in the same suburb with the same panel to give a fair comparison. But essentially at this time of year, yesterday was a perfect day and my system produced just under 19 kilowatt hours. In the summer, that can be as high as 42 or 43 kilowatt hours. So there is a big difference in how the system will perform with the sun lowering the sky in the shorter days. And ultimately, the way that the system runs most effectively with East West is ultimately trying to use as much of that power in that curve as possible. So we'll look at that with the Fronius monitoring that I've got installed. Firstly, <clears throat> a lot of people ask me, why did we have Q-cell panels installed? Because we do offer a range and ultimately we can install any panel is and like we've got a warehouse full of any particular stock. So why Q-cell? I started in this industry back in 2015 after working in the mining industry for a number of years and <clears throat> ultimately when I start doing anything I like to do is my own research. I like to look into how the panels are made, where they're made, how they're tested, lots of other bits and pieces just like any consumer out there would when they're adding something for their home. So Qcell was originally an, a German made panel. They're German design, they still do a lot of the research and development there, but they've now moved most of their manufacturing or all of their manufacturing, sorry should I say, over to South Korea. And they make some panels in China as well for a slightly different panel, a slightly different model with a different warranty. The panels that they use, the Qcell Pro, um, which was installed out at Desert Knowledge in Alice Springs back in 2012, that system's continually been performing out in one of the harshest environments in the world. And there's a website there that you can go onto, which is the DKA Solar Center. And you can see all the live data, all the historic data for how those panels have performed. Qcell have consistently been in the top three, if not top two panels that are installed out there. And there's around 30 different manufacturers that have got systems there. So it's a really good indicator of how the system will actually perform rather than just what's printed on a data sheet or how it's tested in a lab because ultimately in Alice Springs it can range from 40 degrees in the summer to this time of year where it could be below zero potentially at night so they do withstand some pretty harsh conditions 
The other thing that I love about the Q-cells is the way they were tested at James Cook University in Townsville, where they subjected their panel to a one in 500 year cyclone event. So ultimately, we wanna make sure that what we're providing is gonna stand the test of time, as storms and everything else are becoming more frequent. So Q-cell ticks the box in terms of how they're tested. The other major thing for, for us and for me personally is the backup. So Q-cells are owned by Hanwha Group. Hanwha are a Fortune 500 company They've been around for over 60 years and they're diverse across many industries. So manufacturing, tourism, leisure, multiple logistics and other companies that are involved there. So with everything that's been going on the past few months and the way that the, the climate and the economy has been changing, it's really important to have a product that's got that backup and the parent company being so diverse across not just solar energy is really important as we've seen many manufacturers leave the industry over the last few years. I'll take you over to my inverter and we'll have a look at Fronius as well. So this is the Fronius Primo inverter that I've got installed in my garage here in Brisbane. I'm recording this at about 8 a.m. It's June the 24th, so just after the shortest day. And you can see on the screen here, the production's at around 200 watts. So because of that bit of shade that I mentioned on the eastern side, between about 6.30 when the sun's coming up and the inverter starts kicking on and about 8.45 to nine o'clock, that shade's affecting the eastern string of my panels. So at this time, I'd probably be expecting maybe about four to 500 watts early morning, but ultimately, given that I'm able to shift the load and run my hot water and my swimming pool a little bit later, it doesn't really impact too much in terms of how we save power. But what I'll do, I'll run through that on my monitoring as well, so you can see exactly what I mean and ultimately what the loss is, because you've got the option to use an optimizer or a micro inverter for your system but I've worked out that roughly I'll lose about half a kilowatt to about one kilowatt hour per day which if I consume that power would be worth anywhere from about 15 to 25 cents so we'll do a calculation to see how beneficial an optimizer would be so what I want to show you right now is how to read the inverter so you've got your live screen so you can click on now which will show you exactly how much power is being produced it'll show you the voltage, the current, everything else that's running through the inverter. You've also got a log. This will show you how much power has been produced for the day so far. So because we're early morning in winter, it's only produced 180 watts to date. How much for the year? So we're almost at the four megawatt mark. And how much in total, which is just over 24 megawatts, which as I said, the, in the installation was late October 2017. So just under three years. You can also cycle through and see other output power, how much the system saved, the amount of carbon dioxide that has been removed from the atmosphere. And the second option, or the second thing that you can look at, is a curve of power. So because this is early in the morning, it's not really showing too much now. So we do get asked a lot of questions about the best location for the inverter. So my switchboard is back to back on this wall in the garage. The garage is pretty well ventilated. There's a window, there's a back door and a roller door at the front. So if you are gonna tuck it away in the garage, there's a few considerations that we'll, we'll discuss and ultimately look out the best location for you. I'll take you out to where the switchboard is and I'll show you what the smart meter and hot water timer looks like as well. well the active stream meter that reads the power, that will actually measure how much power you've consumed from the grid, but also how much power you send to the grid. So that's what registers as your feed-in tariff that you'll pay the credit for, depending on the retailer, that will vary anywhere from about seven up to potentially 17 cents at the moment locally in Southeast Queensland. So along the bottom, there's a row of main switches. Like any home, they're separated for your power points, your lighting, hot water, air conditioning, pool, whatever you may have. So when you have solar installed, there's a new main switch for your inverter, which you can see along the bottom left next to my main switch for power. And on the right hand side where it's N9, that's the Fronius smart meter, so we'll just have a quick look at that as well. So the Fronius smart meter allows you to measure how much power you're consuming from your system. It'll measure how much power you're consuming from the grid and how much you're sending back to the grid as well. So you get a full overview of exactly how the system is working around the clock. So at night, it'll show you all the power that you've taken from the grid. So obviously if you're cooking dinner, you've got the lights on, the TV on, heating or cooling, depending on the time of year it'll register that as well. So if there's any loads that you're able to move and shift, you'll be able to see it daily with an energy balance. And it also shows you live production and live consumption. So if you're running your washing machine or your dryer, 
it'll show you exactly how much power is being consumed. Now, I mentioned before about the timer and contactor. So the timer and contactor is used for hot water when you've got electric hot water installed. There's also an option of using the relay switch with the Fronius inverter. So back here <clears throat> on the right hand side is my timer and contactor. So you can see on the left hand side, there's like a spinning wheel. The spinning wheel is used to set the time that your hot water tank will operate. So when the water's heated. So you can set that in 15 minute increments. So you can change it seasonally if required. Ultimately, at the moment, I've got mine set from about 10.30 till about three o'clock. So you'll see on my monitoring from about 10.30 till 12.30, there's about two and a half kilowatts that are sent to the hot water, which is the 2.5 kilowatt element that we've got installed. So that'll heat up to, through the day and then intermittently heat up again in the afternoon as required. You'll see quite a difference between the winter hot water consumption and the summer hot water consumption, which we'll be able to show you as well through this monitoring. That reflects the amount of hot water that you'll use. Ultimately in the summer, you're using quite a lot less hot water because it's a lot warmer. You don't need such long hot showers, but the air temperature is also warmer as well. So the tank will stay a little bit hotter at different times. So when you've had your system installed, that new meter will be changed over by your electricity provider after the installation, depending on the type of meter you have. If you've got a new home with a new meter, it'll simply be reprogrammed, which is nice and quick, only takes a couple of days. If the meter has to be replaced, your retailer will do that. It normally takes them about two to three weeks to complete everything. So we do all the paperwork, we get all the approvals sorted and everything else. They'll just come and tidy that up afterwards. And once that's done, you're then able to sell power back to the grid. So this is my system, as I mentioned, the Q-Cell with the Fronius inverter. Thanks for watching.